So we need to enable the simulation mode. From the online menu, select Simulation. Notice this red box in the status bar. It is a reminder that the simulation mode is active. The next step is to connect online with the PLC simulator. The online connection is established with the login command. The login and logout commands are available here from the online menu. Or you can use these symbols for login or logout from the toolbar. So we log in and as we connect online, the application on the PC is compared to the simulator's currently loaded application. Based on that comparison, you will probably get a prompt asking if it is okay to go ahead and download. Here it says that no application exists and do we want to create it? We will say yes and the application will be created and compiled with your programming and automatically downloaded to the simulator. At this point, we are logged in. We have an online connection to the simulator and the application is downloaded. Notice the status bar has another red box. We haven't started the simulator yet, so it's in stop mode. To run the application, we have to start the simulator. The start and stop commands are available here from the debug menu, or there are start and stop buttons on the toolbar. So let's start it. Check the status bar. We have a green box telling us the simulator is running. So now that we are online, the display changes from edit mode to monitor mode. When logging in, you may have noticed a change to the display here in the workspace. The vertical line, sometimes called the rail, is highlighted blue. The horizontal line to the left of the contact is highlighted blue as well. The blue line represents the path of logical continuity. It is the path of true conditions that could enable an output if all conditions are satisfied. The contact is an input instruction. It is assigned a Boolean variable that is the address IX0.0. The value of the bit at IX0.0 is false. So the condition for the contact instruction is false. This is where the path of logical continuity ends and the coil remains false. So how do we test this? We have no push button that we can press that will set the value of the variable at IX0.0 from false to true, but setting the contact condition to true is exactly what we need to complete the test. Well, this is how it's done. Double click on the contact instruction. A blue box with the word true appears. This is now prepared to write a value of true to the simulator memory. Double click again and a black rectangle that says false will appear. So now it's prepared to write the value of false to the assigned variable. Double click one more time and it's back to normal. Each double click cycles through true, then false, and then back to normal. But the value doesn't actually change until we do one more thing. So let me show you. Double click here to prepare to write to true. Then place the mouse cursor anywhere in the workspace and right click. Then select write all values of device dot application right here. Now you see the difference. The contact is now highlighted blue. This indicates the condition for the instruction is true. The horizontal line to the coil is blue, and so is the coil instruction. There is a path of logical continuity to the output instruction. The variable assigned to the coil, QX0.0, is now true in the PLC memory. 
let's do this to make the contact false again. And it goes back to the way it was before. So we have finished testing. We can stop the simulator, log out to disconnect, and then turn off simulation mode from the online menu.